All right, guys, as I said in the reading video, we are not going to have any new material on Friday. It's going to be a day to get any loose ends tied up, any missing work submitted. You will also get an email regarding your math work Thursday evening so that you know if you have anything missing that you need to submit Friday. So that being said, today we're not going to learn any new concepts. We're just going to review. We're going to go back and review all of our work with conversions we've been doing for the last probably three weeks because we were working on it when we were still in the classroom. So again, here are our help. Not really sheets, more like help slide. And then golden rules of converting, remember big to small, multiply, small to big, divide. And I know some of you in your notes have been putting this. That's perfectly acceptable. These are your notes. I'm just checking to make sure you remember the rules. All right, please make sure on your independent practice you are showing your work. If you simply write an answer on this line right here and show me no work in this space, I am not giving you credit. In my mini lessons, I specifically show all my work. That is exactly what you should be doing. Okay, first one, feet to inches. So I know I need to first get the conversion for feet to inches. Again, if you need to scroll up, scroll up. If you have them memorized, fantastic. I know one foot equals 12 inches. Again, this is what I'm looking for, not only in your notes, but on your independent practice. Feet to inches, I know feet are bigger than inches, so that's multiply. So I'm gonna be doing 12 times seven. 7 times 2 is 14, carry my 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So 7 feet is equal to 84 inches. Taking a little pause in case you need to get it written down. Here's one of the ones where we have a remainder. That's why it has both feet and inches in our answer right here. Okay. So again, first we get the conversion. What's the conversion with feet and inches? Well, one foot is equal to 12 inches. I am converting inches to feet, but I'm going to have a remainder, some extra inches. So really, it's inches to feet, small to big, which means divide. So I'm going to take 45 divided by 12. Skip count strategy, 12, 24, 36, 48, and I already noticed 48 is bigger than 45, so I'm going to stop there. If I have 45, I can get 1, 2, 3 groups of 12. 3 times 12 is 36. Subtract. Now 5 minus 6, careful, you need to regroup a 10, so take one away. So now it's really 15 minus 6, which is 9, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So what that is telling me, this three right now is how many feet I can get. I can get three whole feet from this. Now down here, this nine, those are my leftover inches. So that's my remainder. So 45 inches is equal to three feet, nine inches. All right, minutes to seconds. First, I need my conversion. I know one minute equals 60 seconds. Minutes are bigger than seconds, so I know I'm going big to small, which means multiply. So I need to take that 60 times eight. Eight times zero is zero, and eight times six is 48. So I know eight minutes is equal to 480 seconds. Here's another one with remainder. Minutes converted to hours, and my remainder will be those leftover minutes. So my conversion is one hour equals 60 minutes. Minutes are smaller than hours, so I'm dividing 95 by 60. Skip count strategy, remember, if you're counting by 60s, it's the same as counting by 6, so 6, 12, but you just add that 0. 
then 12, so we have 6, 12, it would be 18, add that zero. But I can go ahead and stop there because it says 95 and 120 is already bigger, so I know I'm done. If I have 95, I can get one group of 60. 1 times 60 is 60, so I'm going to subtract. 5 minus 0 is 5, 9 minus 6 is 3. So again, that tells me I can get one whole hour, so that's where the 1 goes. And that tells me that I have 35 minutes left over. So that's my remainder. I have an extra 35. So that means 95 minutes is equal to one hour, 35 minutes. All right, millimeters to kilometers. Again, I know I've been doing those conversions in my head. If you need to scroll up here, or if you need to do this on your independent practice, go ahead, scroll up here. So I am converting meters to kilometers. I think that's what it said, right? No, millimeters to kilometers. Oh, this one's a little tricky. When you look up here, we don't have a conversion for millimeters to kilometers, but we can figure this out. What I'm gonna do, because two-step conversions, we haven't learned those yet, what I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to do Go ahead and cross out that milli. It's okay. If you want to give it a try, go ahead, but two-step conversions, that's not something we're going to be learning this year. That's going to happen next year for you. All right, 9,000 meters equals how many kilometers? Well, we know one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So now I need to convert. Well, meters to kilometers, small to big, so that means I'm taking 9,000 divided by 1,000. Remember our rule for dividing. You can take away the same number of zeros from both numbers. So what I'm left with is 9 divided by 1, which equals 9. Sorry about that typo, guys. Crazy times, crazy times. Miss Clary's trying to rush, rush, rush and makes a mistake. I apologize, guys. Thanks for being flexible. All right, so that is all we are doing today. What you're going to do on independent practice is just what I've done here. Remember, I'm going to be looking for, number one, did you write your conversion? Number two, did you show your work? I don't just want to see answers on the lines. Remember, as you get older as a mathematician, it's all about being able to justify, prove your answers, explain your thinking. If you need help with independent practice, send me a message. Um, you can canvas message me, you can email me, and hopefully there are no problems. Thank you for all of you who've been sending me notes when I make mistakes in the videos. You've been so kind, and I've been able to change them. I really appreciate it.